Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. The right that I pushed hard and it finally got changed, the married couples in the privacy of their bedroom, excuse me, the mar I'm thinking about the Dobbs, the Dobbs decision. Imagine, well, I'll get to that in a second. This has been the President of the United States of America. May God have mercy on our souls. TV.com slash Stu is the place to go to subscribe to Blaze TV. Use the promo code Stu to save 10 bucks. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video right now. It's the least you can do for America. Mm -hmm. Pat Gray is here with his thoughts on the midterms. Joe Biden is set to be the well-spoken one for once as he campaigns for John Fetterman in Pennsylvania. But we start by doing the green delusion. A lot of times we'll feature idiots on this program. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's just fun to illustrate the absurdity of the left with the morons that represent it. And we've seen these climate activists recently come out and, and they've been doing really dumb things. For example, in Germany, climate activists glue themselves to Volkswagen visitor facility floor and then criticize company for not providing bowls to urinate and defecate in while being glued. Now, you might... I mean, there's so many questions I have here. What does gluing yourself to something prove? If I were them, I would just be like, look, congratulations. I'm going to put a tent around you, uh, if you and I'll give you some glue solution if you want to leave. But I'm not doing one more, not one more bit of effort. I hope you grow enough skin cells in your hands to get out of here because you're not getting any help from us. Uh, it's not really what companies usually do. They usually coddle these people. Uh, here is the one of the main protesters. He says, together with 15 other members of science, scientist rebel, I have occupied the Porsche pavilion. Uh, nine of us glued to the floor and some of us on hunger strikes until our demands to decarbonize the Germany, the German transport sector are met. And that's usually how these things change. Usually people glue themselves to stuff and then the national government changes their transportation sector policy. That's that's the typical way these things work through. But I love how this developed. V Volkswagen told us they supported our right to protest, but they refused our request to provide us with a bowl to urinate and defecate in a decent manner while we are glued and have turned off heating. People uh, who in support can't get out of the building. Now, there isn't, just so you know, in case you were wondering, there isn't a civilized or honorable way to pee and poop in a bowl. That's just like science. I mean, you'd think a scientist would understand that. He went on to say, just a clarification, people in support can get out of the building, but then they couldn't get back in. We can't order our food. <laughs> we must use the one provided by Volkswagen. Lights off, random unannounced checks by security guards with bright torches. Police just came in. So Volkswagen's providing food to these people. They're still bitching about it, and they're upset they can't get DoorDash to show up. I mean, come on, let Uber Eats in the front door. Where's Grubhub? That's uh, quite a complaint. And I ask you this, I suppose, because it's easy to make fun of morons just like this. But who exactly are the real idiots? Who are they? It's interesting because let me go to the, the president for a second here and the Democratic Party. They passed a bunch of really meaningful climate legislation. Yeah. Oh, yes, this legislation is absolutely incredible. They bragged about it frequently. Because of the Inflation Reduction Act's investments, America is on track to decrease greenhouse gas emissions by about 40 percent below 2005 levels in 2030, positioning America to meet President Biden's climate goals of cutting greenhouse gases at least in half in 2030 and reaching net zero by no later than 2050. Now, of course, if you've watched the show for a while or watched these stories for a while, you know kind of the scam that's built into this. They are using 2005. Why are they reducing it from 2005 levels? Why wouldn't they reduce it from today? Joe Biden wasn't president in 2005. Why would he create a policy that reduces emissions from the 2005 levels? Well, of course, that's because they've already fallen. He's about halfway to the goal before he even starts. 
This is the scam uh, of the left. But this it's important to remember what this this bill, the Inflation Reduction Act, that has nothing to do with reducing inflation, but has more to do with a bunch of green spending. And this was touted as basically the most important climate bill ever passed. I want, to, I want you to watch President Biden talking about it. This bill is the biggest step forward on climate ever, ever. And it's going to allow, it's going to allow us to boldly take additional steps toward meeting all of my climate goals and the ones we set out when we ran. The biggest step forward on the climate ever, ever. The most important bill in climate history. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you might say, well, there's a lot in this bill. What's the most important thing in this bill? Well, luckily for you, Kamala Harris was asked this very same question, and she had a wonderful answer. What are some parts of the Inflation Reduction Act, this, this amazing new law that you are most excited about? So, I mean, so much. Mm. So much. I'm, Me too. Uh, One of the things that I'm very excited about is what we have been doing in terms of electric vehicles. Right. Um, And I I have a particular fondness, I must tell you, for electric school buses. I love electric school buses. (laughs) (laughs) She loves buses. I really do. And we're manufacturing them in our country. I've Mm. been to the manufacturing plants. I've I've been on these electric school buses. And think about it. Aside from the pandemic, on a daily basis, 25 million children in our country every day go to school. What? On those diesel-fueled school buses. Wow, kids go to school on buses. That's an incredible insight from our vice president. Uh, She uh, is a big fan of the wheels of the bus going round and round, and she brought that to you right there. Remember, this is the most exciting, most important part of the most important legislation in the history of the climate. And I want to give you some perspective on what that means. So let's look at this, Bill. What is in there about electric buses? What could be so exciting? Let's read from uh, the summary of the bill. Clean, heavy-duty de- vehicles. That's the part she's talking about. It's a descri- the description is a new EPA funding program for Class 6 and electrical commercial vehicles, including trucks, transit, buses, and school buses. The funding... One billion dollars. All right, a billion bucks going towards us uh, electric buses. That's, that's pretty freaking exciting, right? I mean, that's the most exciting part of the most exciting piece of legislation in history. Now, the question is, all right, you got a billion dollars. How much does an electric school bus cost? I mean, is, is it, are they expensive? Let's look. The biggest barrier for school districts looking to adopt electric buses is the initial cost of roughly three to four hundred thousand dollars per bus, <laughs> said Lennis Barlow, a clean energy associate with Environment Texas. So we got a billion dollars to buy electric buses. Let's just say let's let's throw out the rest of that uh, bill there. You know, the uh, let's see uh, trucks, transit and regular buses and commercial vehicles, throw all that out. Let's say they're spending all this money on electric buses. If you were to do that, you could buy 2,857 electric buses, which is pretty fantastic when you think about it. It's a lot of buses. But what kind of dent does that put in the climate problem? Hmm. How many school buses do we have in the United States? She was talking about a lot of kids going to school. Well, 2,857 Buses really make that big of a difference. Well, out of the roughly 500,000 school buses in the United States, this is before this bill was passed, less than 1% or just over 1,800 were electric as of the end of 2021, according to blah, 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 blah. So you're going to add, you're going to double, more than double the amount of electric school buses in this country if they spent it in that precise way, which is not really how it's going to be spent. But let's assume it for make the best possible case for Kamala's argument. So let's say, though, we go bigger. I'm willing to go bigger. We know Kamala's argument, but let's go bigger. What if we were to go a little farther? Let's say we could take not just 2,000 school buses and replace them with electric vehicles. What if we did half of them, half of all school buses? What would that do for our climate? If half of school buses in the country switch from diesel to electric, about 2.1 million tons of carbon dioxide could be reduced annually, even when accounting for emissions from electricity generation. Okay, that's big. 
2.1 million tons. That's a lot. And that's exactly where they want your brain to stop. If you want to be on the left-wing green media uh, merry-go-round, this is the time to click on to the cat video over on your left. Okay? You got to make sure you don't keep watching because now we're going to put all of this into context a little bit. Let's put the climate into context. I want to bring your, to your attention a really boring, boring story. A story that is so dull, nobody really covered it in any depth. No one paid any attention to it. And it was presented with really boring headlines like this. Uh, chi- uh, what is it? China vows to step up capacity of energy supply, comma, reserves. That's, is that a big story? Why would anyone care about a story like that? Who would even read it? Well, I read it, of course. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to read a little bit to you. And I'm just going to give you, this is the main, I think, the key part. But it was a pretty boring story. Uh, the ruling party aims, this is the Communist Party, aims for annual coal production to rise to 4.6 billion tons in 2025. A deputy director of the cabinet's National Energy Administration, Ren Jingdong, which is, by the way, now my favorite name, Ren Jingdong. He said at a news conference during the ruling party Congress that would be a 12% increase over last year's 4.1 billion tons. So, okay, all right, 12% increase of China coal production, whatever. Who, who cares? Why would anyone care about that? I mean, we have the most important thing ever with the electric buses going on. Why would we care about uh, something like that? Hmm. Hmm. Why would we care about something like that? Why bother bringing that story up at all? If it was important, wouldn't the media be focusing on it? All they do is care about global warming. Look, the truth is the media will never focus on a story like that because it would dismantle their entire narrative. Let me tell you why. The announcement that China made is crucially important for the global warming debate. This is just one part of one announcement. But what was said was very important. Just the increase, not the whole amount, but just the increase announced in the use of coal, not all fossil fuels, but just this one fossil fuel, is enough to wipe out all of the emission savings from the most important part of the most important climate legislation ever signed. We spent months being told at the top of every newscast how revolutionary this bill would be, and it's wiped out with one announcement from a foreign dictator. In fact, just the increase, not the whole amount of coal, but just the increase in the amount of coal used by China in that one announcement will cause more than 20,000 times as much emissions than Kamala's favorite part of her favorite climate bill. Let's go crazy. Let's say we converted every single school bus in America into an electric school bus, a nearly impossible task that would cost us at least $175 billion by itself. Just this one announcement from this one country about this one form of energy that no one in the media focused on at all would cause 119 times the emissions saved by every single school bus in America going electric. Let's be a little more relatable here. The media and the left are always telling you to abandon your SUV. Do your part. It all adds up in the end, you know. Well, just this one announcement from this one country about this one form of energy that no one in the media bothered to tell you was important is the equivalent of adding 96,437,228 Ford Explorers to the world, all driven 12,000 miles apiece. Now, of course, this would be difficult to do in reality, not just because the traffic would be terrible, but also because it's 29 times the amount of Ford Explorers ever produced. Just this increase, again, not the total amount of coal they're burning, 
Just the increase they made in one announcement earlier this week is the equivalent of 82% of all vehicles in America. If the left, if the media really cared about the climate, why would I be the one telling you this stuff? Wouldn't this be the biggest story in the world? We've been paying American citizens thousands of dollars a piece to convert to electric vehicles. Why? They like to tell you that every little bit matters. But I am here to tell you that it doesn't. Your efforts mean nothing. Nothing. This is one announcement from one country about one fossil fuel from one foreign dictator. And that's the most important thing. Even if all their science is correct, we're not quibbling with one bit of the left science here. That's not what we're doing. If it's all correct and we wind up going ahead with these economy destroying plans that make Americans suffer that the left keeps presenting, it can all all be wiped out by the whim of a foreign dictator that we have absolutely no control over. In fact, increasingly, it seems like China is controlling us, not the other way around. So think about this next time you laugh at the moronic climate protesters. Yeah, they glue themselves to stuff. Yeah, you know, yes, they're idiots. Yes, we should mock them relentlessly, of course. But who is the real idiot here? Is it the climate protester or is it our president? You know, we've been brainwashed into believing the only way to grow our money for retirement is to risk it in the stock market. But that's not true. You can reach your financial goals and dreams without taking any unnecessary risks. Bank on yourself is a better way to grow and protect your hard-earned money. This retirement plan alternative has never had a losing year in over 160 years. And I feel like that's a pretty good record. I wish our country had that record. They provide guaranteed, predictable growth and retirement income with no luck, skill, or guesswork required. Your plan doesn't go backward when the markets tumble. Both your principal and your growth are locked in. This is a tax-free retirement income uh, plan that you're in control of. You get access to your money for any purpose with no questions asked and without government penalties or restrictions on how much you can take or when you can take it. Try doing that with a 401k or IRA. Good luck. Get yourself some peace of mind today with Bank on Yourself. You can get a free report with all the details on how the bank on yourself strategy adds guarantees, predictability, and control to your financial plan. Just go to bankonyourself.com slash stew, bankonyourself.com slash stew. Check it out now, bankonyourself.com slash stew. I'm joined now by Pat Gray. Yes, host of Pat Gray Unleashed. It's right here on Blaze TV, wherever you get your podcast as well. Pat, how's it going? Wow, he looks angry there, doesn't he? He does. He looks angry. I don't know what the deal is. You're such a lovable, uh, huggable character. Right? And then you're screaming at the right? microphone yeah. all the time. doesn't I, make any sense. Why it's do weird. you do well, that's just, I don't know why. I, well, that's I'm what portrayed happens. portrayed that way. That's all. You're currently leashed. That's the difference. Yes. You're, right. I am leashed. This right is now. you leashed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> on your show, you're unleashed. Yes. So it gets a little different. Um, I want to take your temperature on the election. Because it's about 98.6, I think. Right really? Mm -hmm. So you're saying normal? Yes. Average. Mm -hmm. That's what you're expecting. Yes. Because I'm, I go back and forth. I uh -huh. mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic at this point, generally speaking. I'm starting to become really optimistic because, uh, I mean, there are some races that are really a surprise right now. I think you know J.D. Vance was kind of written off for a while in Ohio. Mm -hmm. He looks pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob Johnson wasn't doing well at at certain points in Wisconsin, and he's, I think, winning now. Uh, Carrie Lake is pulled even with Katie Hobbs in yeah, the let's, governor's race. Let's start there, because Carrie Lake is an interesting one. The, the, the media told us she was this uh, stop-the-steal, election-stolen extremist. Right. And, like, I just, I think what happened is, like, reality ran into the whole situation. People look at her and they say that that's not what I get from her at all. My gosh, she's been fantastic. I mean, is there anybody better spoken than Carrie Lake? Yeah. If there is, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen him because she just handles herself so well and she's so prepared. Like the other day when she was asked about um, being an election denier mm -hmm. and she had her aide, uh, give, me the, give me the list. She gets this list and she's got, I don't know, 130 Democrats who were election deniers <laughs> and presents it to the 
uh, to the reporters. And she said, like, OK, to her 20 year old aide, uh, you're not a reporter, right? No. OK, he's doing his your, your job for you. Um, here's a list of all the Democrats who denied elections since the year 2000. I mean, it was just she's just great. And she's calm and measured and smooth, attractive. Uh, she's got great policies. I she's a great candidate. Yeah, and the, the television experience you can't say enough about right, it. Right, that's for sure. She can handle it. She's mm -hmm. I, you know she does seem calm too, which is important. She's not screaming at people. Right. She's just calm and she's not everything. insulting really anybody. Yeah. She's putting them in their place, but she's not, you know, she's not throwing bombs at them. Yeah. So, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's been doing a good job. Um, what do you think of the other race there, Masters uh, and, and Kelly? You know, I haven't followed that much, mm -hmm. um, but I'm hopeful Masters can pull that out. Yeah. You think um, if Lake wins, there's a good chance there's not that many crossovers. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the, of course, the one we've been paying a lot of attention to is Pennsylvania <laughs> with uh, John Fetterman. <laughs> Dr. Oz, Jeez. what a weird, I mean, what a weird election. It, it is so weird. And it's so great that the U.S. Senate and our government is becoming a hospital ward, <laughs> like a CCU unit, uh, intensive care, ICU, I guess it would be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you have any sort of brain problems, Please. This is the place for you. <laughs> Please join the United <laughs> States government, won't you? It used to be that we, it was just because they were old. Now right. we're taking health, uh, unhealthy young people and putting them in as well. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so, Because this is an interesting one to me, <clears throat> not only from the Fetterman side. Because, look, I, I did not come into this election thinking, oh my gosh, you know who the best Republican in the world is? That's Dr. Oz. Right. No, know, nobody, like, nobody was. Nobody doing, was, no. right? No. Like, I mean, a good friend Except of Donald Oprah Trump, is maybe. what I think of. Yeah, and Donald yeah. Trump thought Liked so. Liked him? Yeah, I don't know that he was the best candidate in that field, but he he's, was not. He's the one that won yeah. in a very narrow uh, victory. Yeah. He, you know, one thing I will say about Dr. Oz, though. He, we haven't seen a lot of mistakes out of him. Yeah. You know, I mean, right. they're like, oh, well, he, he bought vegetables at a grocery store. All right, I got that. <laughs> what else do you have on the guy? He used a fancy word for the vegetables at a grocery store. Yeah. It seems to be the only yeah. argument against him. <laughs> and you know what? That wouldn't be a, the deciding factor for me in no? that particular race. No, it really <laughs> Wait, wouldn't. Wait, what about that he used to live in New Jersey, though? Yeah, that still doesn't bother me. No, Wait, I'm okay with okay, that. Okay, now I'm going to get right. you with this one. He's rich. Yeah, 10 homes, mm. 10 homes. No, uh, it's still not the determining no. factor for no. me, no. I want my people to be completely unsuccessful in life, <laughs> just like John Fetterman. Yes, That's please. <laughs> Lived in your parents' basement till you're 50 years old. That's and have a really bad brain injury now. That's, yeah, that's the kind of candidate I'm looking for. Because he in was, that race. you know, already really bad. Yeah, he was before yeah, he was. the stroke. Have you seen terrible. the goiter or whatever on the back of his neck? No. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't gonna. The thing is a living being. Really? On the back of his head. It's got to be. That big. I mean, it's oh, gigantic. Really? So the mystery of why the hoodie all the time has been solved, uh, he covers that up. Oh, is that really true? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so I don't know if he's got some other health issue, too, because that is nasty looking. The guy is a mess. Yeah. And he's he's hasn't had a job, you know, until they elected him to, to this office that he currently is in. And... Uh, you know, I, I don't want anything bad for him. Uh, you know, I, I hate that he, he was sick and he almost lost his life. But I'm well, sorry. Now we don't elevate you to the U.S. Senate with when you've got some lingering health issues like that. I kind of want my senators to be able to understand language. Really? You know, when they go there. Yeah, Just on the I'm picky that way. What, you mean if you want them to be able to have a computer in front of them all the time no. and read the answers? No, I no? want them to just, just be able to understand spoken word. Wow. I know. That's a high it's bar a high you're standard. asking them to clear. It really is. <laughs> For just the U.S. Senate. Yeah. I don't know why I'm that picky. <laughs> it's just so know? bizarre. You know, I think, you know, when you look at the health <clears throat> situation, you said, first of all, you said, uh, was. I mean, he currently has health situation. Right, uh, yes. Health situation. Yes, true. Um, but... When you talk about his health uh, past, he will not release his medical records. Yeah. He released this week a letter from a doctor who says he's pretty much fine except for the whole he can't hear speech thing. Yeah. But this doctor appeared to begin with him in May, which is the same time he had the stroke. Like, where... He says he's been his doctor since May. Well, what, <laughs> what about... Did he not have any doctors before this? 
I don't understand. Uh, we should look into that, yeah. maybe. Maybe he, somebody could look into that. He's a guy who's held, holding black people at gunpoint. Yeah. Uh, just running through his community. Yeah. He's vandalized local businesses. And he was proud of it. And he's proud of it. This guy is a disaster. An absolute disaster. There's no reason that this race should be within 40 points. Yeah. I mean, he should be behind by 40 and not up by four, or whatever it is currently. And I keep saying this to people who are like, oh, well, Dr. Oz is going to win. I, I think there's a good chance of it. I hope. I think it's very possible. Oh, man. But I'd like to see one single poll I that shows it him shows the lead. Head. I think today we saw one that they were tied for the first time. Oh. So this may be coming soon, but I want to at least enjoy and savor one poll where Dr. Oz is actually leading in this race. And it's interesting because I believe early voting's already begun Mm. in Pennsylvania. Time's running out. And it's why they pushed this debate back until, like, Halloween almost. Like, they know half the voting will probably be done. Yep. What is this? And I'm obsessed with this Fetterman race, too, because I think it's the most bizarre Senate race Mm -hmm. I've ever seen in my life. It is. What does it say about America? What does it say about Pennsylvania? It it says we're in trouble. If Fetterman wins. Uh, Pennsylvania needs to be uh, kicked out of the union. (laughs) Uh, if they elect John Fetterman, <laughs> goodbye. All right, that, that's it. I'm yeah, sorry. Because we've, we've given up. Yeah. We've just given up as a country. Yeah. We've unplugged the machine, and we're just going to just drift off <laughs> right. into a slow, happy oblivion. It says really bad mm-hmm. things about us. It says, first of all, Americans aren't paying attention, and they're so partisan. So they're not paying attention, but the other part is, I think they are so partisan. They don't care. I mean, the guy is could be an invalid, and he kind of is. And it's okay with them because he's a Democrat. That's not okay. Can we just come to that understanding? Mm -hmm. That's not really that hard. No. That's another standard that's not that tough to get over, you know? Yeah, uh, that uh, and uh, and being able to hear speech. Yes. Okay. Uh, Now, as far as I know, Mike Lee can understand speech. That's what I've heard. I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, he had a debate against Evan McMullen the other day, and uh, he did very well, I think. Crushed him. He crushed him. You know Utah better than I do, better than most people. You broadcasted yeah. from there. Uh, mm-hmm. You know you've had a long history there. They're not going to fall for this, are they? I sure hope not. I, and I don't think so. I, I don't think so. But you know, um, you you've got a lot of weird factors going on against Mike Lee. Not just the Salt Lake Tribune, but I mean the Deseret News hasn't been good to him either. I mean the Deseret News is owned by the church. I. I so is the Salt Lake Tribune, kind of. I think it runs oh, really? both of the papers now. But um, what's but the reasoning for that? For so, I, I, you know, I, I don't understand it. I I think Romney is fairly influential, and you know he's not helping the cause at all. He won't endorse Mike Lee. And when have you ever seen that a junior senator not endorse the senior senator in the same party? From his state. I, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. I don't know if I've ever seen it either. So is the, is the idea that they think... I mean, Mike Lee in the media is presented as some extreme guy, but he's yeah, like... The, he's, he's so he's not. Not that at all. Do they want a moderate? Is that, what, is that, is that the vibe of Utah? It, it didn't used to be. It may now because, you know, they've been watered down, the conservatism there, by Californians, of course, um, like mm-hmm. all up and down the West Coast and the West. Um, so it, it may have changed since I've been, you know, it's been 20 years since I lived there. So um, the, it, Utah's changed quite a bit since then. It's grown, and, and like I said, a lot of Californians have moved in. It's not the same state it once was. Now, it's still conservative enough that they should elect the best senator in, in, the, Senate. in the Senate. So I'm very hopeful that they will, and I think, I think they will. All right, let me take you over to Georgia. The last one here. All right. Herschel Walker. Going mm-hmm. up against Raphael Warnock. I don't know if you saw the debate. I thought Walker did pretty darn well. Way better than I expected. <laughs> I know. I, look, mm-hmm. it's a tough spot. Yeah, it you're, is. A, you're a football player. You've never run for office before. Mm-hmm. You're being thrown into this with a new allegation and, and cr- people accusing you of everything. You've got a long history. This is not an easy position for Walker. Yeah. And even Herschel said, you know, uh, that Warnock was really smart and he was going to um, kick his butt or some, something <laughs> to that effect in the, in the debate. But then it didn't happen. Mm. I mean, I thought he scored some really solid body blows um, on abortion and immigration, and he sounded really strong. And uh, there's another case where if Georgia elects that guy again, the Warnock, um, you know, they might be, they might have to be kicked out of the union as well. <laughs> How many yeah, states we might are lose two have? states here. Okay, wait, just a couple. We're at least two states. I, oh, this is another situation, and I think <clears> the <throat> situation very similar in Ohio, where, and 
at this, in, a, in a weird way in Utah as well, where people who are Democrats are acting like they're not Democrats, right? Raphael Warnock is a hardcore liberal. He voted with Biden 96% hardcore. of the time, as Walker noted. He's a hardcore Chuck Schumer liberal. Yeah. And you're going to get that from Evan McMullen as well. You'd get yeah. that from Tim Ryan in Ohio. You'd no get question. that from uh, uh, Fetterman, maybe even worse from Fetterman. But these guys are, with the exception of Fetterman, who's kind of just not really even running a campaign, they're running as moderates. They're trying to say, look, uh, we're the, we care about all the issues you care about. We're in the middle. These mm-hmm. guys are extreme. It feels, it's so pandering and fake when you mm-hmm. vote for all these trillions of dollars in spending. Do, do the voters figure this out in time? Uh, Got to pray that they do, because we're in real trouble if they don't. You know, Biden did the same thing. Biden kind of ran like he was a moderate. Yeah. Wow, he's been anything but... The guy's worse than Barack Obama. Yeah, he is. He's more Absolutely. extreme than Barack Obama. Absolutely. And we don't need a whole nother slew of super extremist senators in office with him. Can you imagine what will happen uh, in the next two years if they hold the Senate? They will absolutely pack the court. I fully believe mm-hmm. that. I, I, I think they'll vote to pack the court. Because they, they, every time they get a ruling they don't like... It's uh, first of all, they say it's the handmaid's tale. Yep. Then they yep. then they claim they come up with some new crazy rule change that's going to alter all of our institutions. Right. They, they can't just lose. Yeah. Right. They'll mm. they'll eliminate. They'll use the nuclear option. They'll eliminate, uh, um, you know, any of the protections that the Senate has and the filibuster. And they'll they'll just do a 50 plus one thing. Yeah. And and uh, and. Ruin this country mm. is what would happen. Uh, overall f- uh, state or the House, do you think the Republicans are going to win? Their, oh, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's any question we regain the House. Senate, what do you think? Senate, I, I think it's better than 50-50 right now. Mm-hmm. I, you know, maybe 55-45, 60-40, something like that. Where do you have it? That's about where, I mean, I think we're, uh, I'm leaning Republican. I don't think, you know, I've seen some people say 54 seats. I don't, I'm not that optimistic oh, yet. Oh, that would be nice. I could but see 51, I don't see that 52 happening. is probably where my head is right yeah. now. Which yeah. would be if enough. We, if we could get to 52, that would be awesome. Yeah, you'd like to have a couple cushion seats for like, yes. like Susan Collins and the, and the Mitt Romneys and maybe Lisa Murkowski coming back. You want to have a couple right. cushion seats because those guys will vote for nonsense. Although, you know, Lisa Murkowski, that's another interesting one. She might she's lose. not a sure bet. So I just feel like ever since we were covering this back in 2010, she lost her primary, ran Tough. as a write-in. A freaking and write-in For the candidate. first time in U.S. history, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. it was. That actually in a won major a statewide race. race. Yeah. yeah, She won. And ever since then, my thought is, Prove to me that a Murkowski can be beaten yeah, in Alaska. True. That's true. Once I will believe it precisely the second that I see it, yeah. but not a second earlier. <laughs> All right, Pat Gray, uh, he, be sure to watch his show and listen as well. Pat Gray Unleashed right here on Blaze TV. And get the cookies, Kexi cookies, K-E-K-S-I.com. Yeah, mm-hmm. They're freaking delicious. Pat, thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, Grip6, so they have fashionable, customizable belts. Uh, they are a small company in Utah that sells in the United States and all over the world, but sources almost everything it uses to make products right here in America. Why? They don't despise this country. It's a weird stance for a, country, a company to take these days, but they actually like it here. And uh, they produce great products made in America. They have belts that are minimalist. They're not like jutting out of your belt. They also have the cool carbon fiber stuff. So when you're going through the, uh, the, air, the airport uh, metal detectors, we won't set it off. And if all of that wasn't enough, Grip6 also comes with uh, great socks. They've got great wallets as well that you can check out. Go to grip6.com slash stew. Use the code stew. You'll save 15% right now. Grip, the number six dot com slash stew. Get 15% off today when you use the code stew. You know, the New York Times, I think it was, had a headline uh, earlier today. It said, like, Biden eschews large rallies uh, in, in campaign push. Now, the, the, the large rallies have eschewed him. That's the no one wants to go to his rallies. No one wants him to even come campaign for him, with one notable exception. That man, John Fetterman. Now, he's, uh, Biden was back in Pennsylvania, back in Pittsburgh today. Uh, to uh, talk about a bridge uh, that collapsed earlier this year and, you know, brag about all the money of yours that he's spending. And he came out and and campaigned for John Fetterman. 
And like you think about this, why would anyone want Joe Biden to campaign for him? No one does. Across the country, he's doing almost no campaigning because every single race is hurt by his presence, with the exception of this particular state. Now, Biden has talked about a connection he has to Pennsylvania in the past, but that's not the reason. The reason is the candidate in the race can't speak. So at least Biden can go and mumble through a couple of sentences in front of cameras so it will at least feel like someone said something at an event. Fetterman, who was there, by the way, didn't say anything because this is totally normal, guys. You should totally put this guy in the Senate. Great, great idea. Uh, Things are are turning up uh, roses right now for Republicans. The GOP holds big leads on key economic issues ahead of the November elections, according to a CNBC survey. Biden's approval was actually pretty good in this particular survey, 46% approved. So this is a a really high water mark for Biden right now. But look at the underlying numbers. Even when the audience overall kind of likes Biden, only 16% said the economy is excellent or good. 83% said the economy was fair or poor. The third straight survey where the percentage is over 80% saying the economy is fair, is, is, uh, is fair or poor. Uh, 27% expect the economy to improve in the next year, and 45% expect it to get worse. This is not the recipe for a big win if you're uh, Democrats. Let me add on to that. New Axios Ipsos Latino poll shows that, yes, Latinos still lean a little bit to the left. They support Democrats, but the margin is shrinking. Democrats, uh, did you, uh, how do you uh, vote if you're a Hispanic slash Latino American? Democrats, 33 percent. Republicans, 18 percent. That is way closer than it normally is. Uh, and do not know, 23. Would not vote, 17. Or independents at 7. If they lose, I mean, look, the, the, the Democratic Party has been built for many decades now on this theory that every minority group would always stay with them. And over time, those minority groups will grow and will be big enough so that they never lose an election again. That's the whole thesis of the party. That's why you get this you know, constant, weird, kiss-ass thing that they do to everybody who looks slightly not like Joe Biden. And, I, you know, I never bought this. You know, the, the, yes, at times, certain minority groups vote very heavily Democrat, but the ideas are what eventually have people sticking around, and we're seeing that with Latino voters now. They're saying, okay, we've tried this for a while, The left way kind of sucks, so we're going to go a different direction, Uh, so that's very bad. And uh, one other development uh, overseas, uh, Liz Truss is quitting. She, of course, was 44 days ago, I think it was, was just appointed prime minister, and now she's bailing because... I, I, because the economy has been in turmoil, uh, reportedly because of this tax cut she proposed. Now, this tax cut was incredibly mild. It would still be higher than our taxes, like they, at the highest amount. They were going to cut middle class tax rates by 1%, one percent, one point. Everybody freaked out, and now uh, she's running away, which I, I don't understand, honestly. I mean, do you believe these things or not? Stick it out. Make make them kick you out for tax cuts. Make them do it, but. Apparently, she's going to step down. There's rumors that Boris Johnson may step up and try to run again to get his old job back. Guys, your system sucks. Okay, I love you, Great Britain. I love you. You know, we have a great tight relationship. You need to look at our Constitution. Yes, we have our problems. But what the hell are you guys doing over there? Every 10 seconds, you got a new leader. You and Israel. We love you both. You got to change your system a little bit. It's very, very screwed up. Come Join us in the Constitutional Republic where everything is going well all the time. I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time making my house feel like home. Well, actually, I spend a lot of time hearing my wife talking about how She's making our house feel like home. And that includes outdoors as well as indoors. That's why I love and my wife loves fastgrowingtrees.com. Now, they have experts over there. They have thousands of plants. You can find the perfect fit for your specific climate, location, and needs. And that's really important because we've had trees die in our backyard over and over again. We went to fastgrowingtrees.com and we just put in our exact zip code and they gave us a list of uh, trees that will actually work in our climate. So we didn't have to guess. We didn't have to go to the store and then get the wrong one and then kill the stupid thing in the backyard. No, Fast Growing Trees gave us an outline as here are a bunch of choices. Which one looks good? Which one do you want? They'll all live where you live. 
That's really important. They're shipped to your door in a couple of days. And if you're looking to add some privacy, some shade, some natural beauty to your yard, whatever you're looking for, Fast Growing Trees has what you need and care advice available 24-7. If you've never been, you know, a big garden guy, you don't have a green thumb, Join Fast Growing Trees. They've got over a million happy customers, including myself and my wife, with their 30-day Alive and Thrive guarantee. You can trust everything can be healthy for years to come. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash stew. You'll save 15% off your entire order now through Halloween. Get 15% off fastgrowingtrees.com now through October 31st. If you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash stew, flat, <laughs> fast growing trees. Not fast speaking trees, fast growing trees.com slash stew. Somewhere deep in the McDonald's headquarters uh, lives some man who says, I want a quarter pounder built exactly this way. Put the cheese on this way, put this much ketchup on, this many on, these many onions, you know, this, uh, this many sesame seeds goes on each bun. And every once in a while you think, okay, well, someone, there's centralized control of that entire environment. It's always repetitive at every single McDonald's. You know exactly what you're getting. Sometimes I wonder if our media has the same process. Like, is there someone in, in, the, in some boardroom somewhere saying, hey, cover this story this way? Almost every single outlet today, when covering this particular new law proposal by Republicans, said a version of this. A national don't say gay law? Republicans introduced bill to restrict LGBTQ related programs. Now, I want to give you, this is in paragraph two, by the way, where they describe what the law actually does. Here's what it says. The Stop the Sexualization of Children Act of 2022 would prohibit the use of federal funds to develop, implement, facilitate, or fund any sexually oriented program, event, or literature for children under the age of 10. Does, I, I'm sorry, is there anyone who disagrees with that? You want your kids to be sexualized under the age of 10? Why wouldn't that be the headline? And by the way, it doesn't even stop those things. It just says you can't federally fund them. They, you can still do them. Apparently, but you can't federally fund sex to kids under the age of 10. And that's how our media covers it. Um, have I said our media sucks lately? Because uh, they do. <music> Stu does merch.com. Stu does merch.com. Go there. Buy things. StuDoesMerch.com. Use the promo code Stu10. You'll get 10% off everything in the store right now. StuDoesMerch.com. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars on your podcast reviews. Please give them and follow the show. Stu does Mandela Barnes. Yikes. Finally, someone talks about how unbelievably radical Mandela Barnes is on top of the fact that his real name is Jesse. Five freaking stars. Uh, you can post your comments on YouTube as well. Click like if you're on YouTube right now or drop a comment in. We really do appreciate it. Sir, I love your take on pretty much every subject. I'm also very surprised you are not a Hollywood celebrity. Kind of presentable, but you have great hair. <laughs> do I? Please keep up the great uh, good work. And please keep having that wise old man visit your stew pid show on Wednesdays. I think he's talking about Glenn. That's hurtful. Uh, thirty nine ninety for that finely crafted marvel of engineering you go. Of course, in today's dollars, that's probably thirty seven thousand four hundred eighty seven dollars. And the massive 10 gallon tank only costs one hundred forty seven fifty one to fill up. Well worth the wait of 14 months, just as this show is well worth the wait each day. Five big stars for the show and its patient host. Yes, my car may be on the way. Uh, just maybe, Stu, if you would have brought, bought an American car, you might just have had it a while ago. Come on, man. It actually is an American car. I, I didn't actually buy a Yugo, guys. And finally, this segment is very well summarized by this comment, Eric Fartwell. That's it. That's the whole comment. 